Hey guys, Black Phantom RT back with another video. So for this week's video, what I'm going to go ahead and do is change out the oil since we haven't changed it out since the break-in process. The break-in process was supposed to be at least 100 miles. It's been well over that. I've added about four to 500 miles on the car since I changed the cam, which has only been, I think, two weeks. I'm not even sure anymore. Maybe a week. Maybe almost two weeks. But yeah, guys, I've just been real busy. Um, I've been working like every day, so I don't really have that much time. And then the weather just hasn't been working with me, as y'all can see. Just the other day, it snowed about four to six inches. And as y'all can see, the car is filthy because it is daily driven. That's all I drive. Drive it to work, drive it out when I want to go somewhere, drive it around town. Because that's the only vehicle I have at the moment. So, yeah, guys. It's a daily driven race car, I guess. As you can call it. But, yeah, guys. For today's video, what I'm going to go ahead and do is change out the oil. And then after the oil change, we'll talk about the cam. The difference in power. What I think about it. And if you should get a cam. So, yeah, guys. I'm going to go ahead and lift up the car and everything. And I am going to be filming the whole oil change process that way if there's anyone out there who doesn't know how to do an oil change you know or hasn't done one on a mopar charger or anything anything like that you know it's someone who just wants to learn they have a video out there that can help them out because i know back then i didn't know how to do stuff like that i mean it took me a while to really learn so much about cars because back then i didn't really know anything about cars if you would have asked me anything about my car back then, I wouldn't even know what to tell you. So yeah, guys, I'm going to film the whole process. That way I can help someone out if they need the help. So I'm going to go ahead and lift the car. And I'll get right back with you. I'm use my GoPro for this, but I don't know. started freezing up. So I'm going to go ahead and use my phone. So I'm not sure if the sound and everything changed. But pretty much on a charger, what you do, get your dad. And right here... It has like some metal plating. Look. Uh, that was ice. Right here. It's hard to get it. Right here. There's a little metal. I don't know what to call it. Like it's part of the frame I guess. That's where you want to place your jacks. You don't want to place it on no plastic or anything like that. Because it could break. It could fall. You know it has one on the front. And one in the back for if you need to change your tire or something. That way you know. That's one all right here. This right here is the metal. It's already all bent on my car, but yeah guys, that's pretty much where you place it. So let me go ahead and place the jack there and lift up the car. Make sure you have it on the right. You don't want it to fall. All right. Ooh. It's good. It's just that popping y'all heard. That's my. What is it called? The side skirt because it's been falling off. It's so close to falling off and I don't know. I'm going to have to take it off and get that fixed. But let me pick it up, guys, and I'll get back with you. See, I only have one jack because I'm not sure what the hell happened to my other jack. I would not recommend doing this. Make sure to use two jacks and get the jack stands just in case because this is dangerous, guys. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but sadly... I don't know where my other jack is. So I'm gonna have to do it like this real quick. But as y'all can see, I have the little container down here and got my ratchet and my torque wrench because I can't break the bolt with the regular ratchet. So just to make it easier, Always get the torque wrench and just break it off. 
I got my adapter though, so I'm gonna get that real quick and I'll be right back, guys. So I went inside, got my adapter for it. Now it fits, as y'all can see. So pretty much you put it, you know, on a torque, whatever you want, whichever one you want really, just to break it. Makes it way easier than to having to be down there with the ratchet when it's just a pain in the ass. So I just get the the torque wrench since that's all I have. If I had a breaker bar, that would be easy too, but I don't have one. So I just get this, take it off. All right, guys, so like I said, it don't really matter what you set it on. I've set it on 50 foot pounds. You're just trying to break it off, not break it off. You're trying to break it. You know what I mean? You're just trying to get it loose. That way you can get it off. So as you can see, I got it loose. Probably just take, take it off by hand. And you always want to have your pan ready because it does squirt out like crazy. Right. Hopefully it's not hot. As you can see. And there you go guys. But I think I forgot something, so I'll be back. Alright guys, I thought I had forgotten to take off the cap, but I guess I did. I don't know where I left it though. But it is draining as you can see. It's in there. And I use the Pennzoil Platinum, I believe. As you can see, I don't know. For a couple, I guess it's a couple hundred. I don't know, it is kind of dark. But I'm draining right now. And I still need to take off the oil filter, which I forgot about. So that's next. Once it finishes draining, I'm gonna let it drain out, get everything out of there. And then we'll get the oil filter next. All right, so I put the oil drain plat, oil drain plug back on right here. And so what's next is the oil filter. So pretty much here's the here's the plug. Pretty much the filter is right next to the whole piece. And hopefully I can get it off by hand. But I am going to need two hands. So, yeah, guys. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Have the pan ready. Because when you do take this off, oil does come out of it also. Some spills and then some's in it. So, when you take it off, you have to dump it out too. For, the, for those of you who didn't know, it does spill. So, yeah, guys. Be careful when you take it off. Because you don't want to get no oil on your face or eyes or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and then we'll put the new one in and everything. And I'll be right back with you. Loose by hand. Uh, let me get, so pretty much just twist it off. Like I said, it does spill, so try to get out of the way. Watch, Let's see. I can get spray. See? It's not much. It's not as much as when you drain the plug, but it does have oil in it. The oil filter also has oil in it, so try to take it off as fast as possible. All right. It's almost off. All right, there we go. See? And you are gonna get dirty, so if you don't like getting dirty, then don't do it. Just take it to someone. But I really don't like taking my car into, you know, places. A lot of guys don't, because you never know if they do it right. You never know if they're actually doing it if they're actually doing what they say they're doing so i like doing it on my own you know so yeah, guys that's how i'm gonna go ahead and get the new one which i have over here i do always use the mopar filter i don't know why just me 
just Mopar, no car, like everyone says. And then, like I said, platinum, full synthetic, 5W20, Pinzolo. I was thinking about going royal purple, but currently I had some Pinzolo left over from the cam. So I went, I went ahead and bought another quart, another five quarts. And probably on the next oil change, I'll go ahead and change it over to Royal Purple. Not sure yet. I have been using Pins Oil since I first had the car, and that's what I like. So, yeah, guys, let me clean up my hands real quick, and we'll put the new oil filter back on. Got my hands cleaned up, and this is it. This is the oil filter. Y'all have never seen one before. Who knows? Most guys have, but ooh, I do like putting some oil at least on the gasket I usually put the oil that I took out on it just you know grab a little bit just to lubricate it nothing big I know some people don't or some people actually put oil in theirs I just like to lubricate the gasket that's about it I keep it from spinning then pretty much what you do you just go ahead and grab it as you can see, it just screws on. So pretty much what you do is put it on. They don't have to be tight. You should just at least get it hand tight. Because when you get it too tight, then it's pain in the ass to take off. And that's when you actually need to use a oil filter removal tool, whatever. But yeah, guys, let's see. It's going to be a little hard. Let me take this out. I will get in there. All right, so that's where the oil filter goes, guys. As you can see, it's still leaking. Almost landed on my face, but pretty much you can't see the oil filter. Here it is. You just get it, screw it back on. And like I said, just get it hand tight. You don't want it too tight because then the next time around, it's a pain in the ass to get it off. So, yeah, guys. Just get it hand tight. Has some oil on it, so. But yep, yeah, that's it right there. Now I just have to tighten up the oil plug, which I'm not sure how much you torque it down to. I always forget. I worked at the dollar store chip. I had learned it, but forgot so pretty much I just hand tie that to get it a little tight not too tight or try to get it tight but you know not too tight to where you break it because you can break the bow and you don't want to do that because then to get one you got to go to your dealership so pretty much if you don't have one around like me mine is about an hour away they close that six all right guys, so I am using my Canon, my Canon camera because my phone died while I was recording. I'm not sure which part it died on. I know I had seen when I was talking it was still working. So yeah guys, put that in charge, grab my camera, GoPro. I can't really see what I'm recording on the GoPro since it needs the app to actually see. So I brought out the Canon. So pretty much what I was saying, I'm not sure. I know I used to work at the Dodge dealership, and I had learned I had learned some of the torque specs, like the oil, because I was changing oil at first. But I forgot that. So pretty much what I try to do is tighten it the most that I can, but not too much, because you can break this bolt. And when you do that, it's a pain in the ass, because you can get that thread stuck in there, and to get it out, who knows how? I mean. A lot of people don't have the tools to get stuff like that out. And to get the new plug, you usually have to go to a dealership, which for me is a pain in the ass because it's about an hour away. So my car would pretty much be parked here until I could be able to go. But yeah, guys, I'm not taking the camera under there because I don't want to get it dirty or anything because it is an expensive camera. So pretty much, like I said, just tying it the best that you can 
and what you think it should be just don't break the boat because that's where it's pain in the ass so i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick then pretty much we'll be done we'll lower the car and get the new oil in so i'll be back with y'all all right guys so i just signed up the drain plug made sure that the oil filter was tight so now we can go ahead and lower the car come over here slowly when you are lowering the car you make sure there's nothing under there lower it down slowly all right so now that now that it's down come on here open your hood get the new oil in make sure to check it make sure that you have what is needed and make sure to run it also run it and then check it again because it always ends up being a little less a little under the line because they never really give you the right amount i think on these engines it's supposed to be about seven quarts seven and a half i usually put eight eight and a half because it does drain it lowers down once you start the car you know gets all in the engine everything gets lubricated all in there but it's a little under the line usually so i like to put a little extra to make sure that i have the right amount so pretty much come on here get this off as you can see 5w20 is what is recommended i put synthetic you know supposedly better for the engine so I make sure to use that every time. And I don't have a little, I forgot what they called. You know, one of those little things to pour the oil in because I forgot what it was called. So I always pour it like this. Oops. So yeah guys, try to get a a little cone or something. You know, even a cup works. That way you don't make a mess like I just did. I usually do it like this, you know, don't bother me. Just try to get a cone, that way you don't waste the oil. But as you can see, that was the one with the three quarts. That was the one that was left over from the cam swap and everything and here's the full one so I'll probably be needing both hands for this one that way I can get it in there and don't spill it so yeah guys let me go ahead and pour this then we'll check the oil and everything and we'll pretty much be done with the oil change and I'll go ahead and talk about the cam and everything so yeah I'll be back with you all right guys so I just finished pouring it in somehow I managed not to spill any it went and they're like nothing just that first one since i was using one hand i guess i spilled some but i'll place y'all down go ahead and check the dipstick and it's good it is how you doing it is good. Like I said, you do need to start up the car though. Make sure that once you start it. And I don't have my keys. All right guys. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my keys real quick. Cause I guess I left them in the house. I'll be right back. All right guys, so I got the keys. Now let's go ahead and start. y'all can hear me but I did put on my emergency brake when I lifted it that's also another you know a little safety safety precaution that way you don't roll or anything 
you know, for some reason you lift it up and it tries to roll, just put on the emergency brakes. That way, you know, it's safe. It's not gonna try to roll away. It won't move on you. And when you do lift it up also, just push it a little bit. Give it a little push. Make sure that it's not gonna fall. Make sure that it's safely secure on the jack stands or whatever. That way, when you do get under it, you don't have to worry about that. Alright guys, so we're going to let it run for a little bit, you know, get that oil circ circulated around the engine, whatever. Then we'll check it again, make sure it has everything. As y'all can see, it's smoking from where I spilled the oil, so don't worry about that. But yeah guys, that's pretty much an oil change, it's not difficult, it's pretty easy. Alright guys, so it's been running about two minutes, I'm about to go ahead and shut it off, then we'll check it again. Alright. Still smoking. All right guys, so the oil was safe. It was on the safe line. You know what, let me pull it out real quick and show y'all what I mean by that. All right, let's see if I can see it. Try to get the camera to focus on it. It probably isn't. Let's see guys. Try to zoom it in. All right, so I can't get it, but pretty much on a dipstick. Let's see, it's kind of focusing. See where those little two dots are on a dipstick? That's the safe line. You don't want it any lower than in the middle of that or under that. See, there you go. See, because when it goes under that, you want to add some oil. But that's the safe line and you don't want it to go under that because it could cause some bad problems. That's how you get your engine to overheat, you know, start having problems, blow your engine, all that type of stuff. Because you don't have any oil lubricating it, cooling it down. And that's where you start fucking up parts inside the engine. So pretty much at all times you want to keep it there. You want to make sure to check it, you know, every month, every week, whatever, every day. It's really up to you, but you want to make sure to check it often. That way you know you're not under that little safe line. And if you are, just add some oil. You don't have to do a complete oil change. Just add some oil and you'll be fine. But make sure to do an oil change every, what is it, every couple of miles, every three months. I'm not even sure. I usually check my oil, you know, check if it gets real black, real dark. If it's real black, make sure to change it because that just means it's dirty been there for a while and it's time for a new oil change but yeah guys that's pretty much it as y'all can see it's done everything's ready it's not complicated it's not something hard it's not time consuming it's pretty quick just like i said i've been working a lot 
and how the time change it gets dark really quick it's starting to get dark right now and then the weather so yeah thankfully got out pretty early today and i was able to do it so now i can get y'all the videos that y'all actually want but let me go ahead and close the hood and everything and we'll talk more about the cam all right guys so i got the hood closed everything you know i'll put that up later but pretty much since i've had this cam i've had it for around a week and a half i'm not gonna lie you can tell the difference it's way beyond stock and i do have my long tubes also so that's another power adder gain power off of that my tune all that i mean i would do a little drive around video but like i said my gopro's dead i don't want to be driving around with the camera in my hand because i don't want to get pulled over because here where i live these cops they're so strict man like i'm not even gonna lie try to pull you over for any little thing and i mean i don't want a ticket right now especially just for driving with the camera but yeah guys um with the cam i can honestly i feel the difference it's i'm not lying there's nothing to lie about you can tell the difference between what it used to be and to what it is now not only do i love the way it chomps the way it sounds it is louder on a cold start i feel like it has toned down a bit now that it is more broken in i feel like it's a, lo a little bit more quieter you know not as loud you can still hear chomp and you can really feel the difference hopefully i can do like i said the zero to 60 and all that i want to go to the drag strip you know get my quarter mile from there but unfortunately since it does snow over here and everything that's already been closed and they won't open up till probably summer so it's gonna take a while sorry if the camera is shaky in my voice because it is a bit cold out here it's around 20 30 degrees i can see my breath but yeah guys um it feels amazing like you can feel the difference like when it when i'm at a stop it shakes a bit and when i step on it it just wants to take off and when i floor it i mean the tires slip it takes off like nothing and i gain speed quick i mean way quicker than before and honestly i think it is well worth your money like i said it did run me around 3600 for everything around there maybe a little bit more but that's with parts installation i mean everything and to me it's well worth it i mean either way for me i know the five sevens have problems with the cam and lifters usually it fails so usually you do need to get a new cam so that's why i didn't mind doing it because if it ever fell on me i would have done it anyways so I went ahead and did it now. But it is well worth the money guys. Like no lie, you can feel the difference. And it's just a great mod, you know. Not only does it change the tone of the car, not only does it make it more aggressive, it is actually a great power adder. And it is helpful as a build as you continue building the car. Because you don't want stock internals and all that on a boosted car. So I have the cam. And my cam is made to go with the Pro Charger. Like I said in my previous video. Because I do plan on Pro Charging this car in the future. Maybe not in the near future, but sometime in the future. And I'm also going to add some forged internals, forged rods, pistons, all that stuff. Maybe even stroke the car to a 392 or a 4 four something. I think it's a 410. I'm not sure because I know you can't do a 426 on a 5.7 because that's too big of a stroke. Something like that. But yeah, guys. That's pretty much it for this week's video. The cam is well worth your money. It feels amazing now. Soon I'll have some video of some driving clips and all that. Unfortunately, I can't today since my phone is dead and my GoPro was freezing on me. Not sure why. 
Maybe it needs an update. I'm not sure. Haven't used it in a while. But yeah, guys, I'll get those videos out to y'all. And then I'll get more racing videos. I'll hit up my friend with the Corvette. Um, you know, post something. So he wants to race me here in town. Because there's a couple people, like I said. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this week's video. Hopefully next week, if it's not snowing, if it's not ugly, I can get a race in. It'll, most likely it'll be the Corvette first. Because I know y'all want to see a rematch. Especially with this new cam installed. So I'll hit him up. See what he says. And yeah guys. That's pretty much it for this week's video. Go ahead and if you haven't added me on Instagram. Add me. It is black underscore phantom RT. It's on my little cover photo. Or you know the little cover on my YouTube channel. If y'all don't, if maybe I spelled it wrong or something, I also put it in the link in the description that we all can add me. And I also made a Twitter because I'm not sure how many people use Twitter. I know more people sometimes use Twitter more than Facebook and Instagram. So I made a Twitter and it's the same, the same as the Instagram. So, yeah, guys, if y'all want to go follow me, add me, go ahead. I'll put all the links in the descriptions. That way y'all can get there easily. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it. Make sure to like, subscribe, no comment. Give me some ideas of new videos, you know. Um, just tell me how I'm doing. Whether it's good, bad, it really doesn't matter. I like all types of comments. Anything that helps me out, helps me bring better videos to y'all. But yeah guys, I'll keep bringing y'all more videos. And I'll see y'all next time.